Good afternoon and welcome to Solent Sports News. I'm Michelle Barham and these are your sporting headlines. Southampton forward Sakumara is likely to miss tonight's Saints fixture against Preston North End. Mara is likely to be given a three-match suspension for violent conduct. The Frenchman is being investigated for an unpunished off-the-ball incident with Ryan Porteous during Saturday's 3-2 win over Watford. Reporter Joey Rapley is now live outside St Mary's Stadium. Yes, we are here outside St Mary's Stadium where all day the sun has been shining and now the curtain is beginning to fall on this year's championship season. There are four teams chasing a place for an automatic spot trying to win promotion to the promised land of the Premier League. Tonight, one of those four, Southampton, welcomed playoff chasing Preston to the south coast. Earlier today, we spoke to head of Saints FC podcast, Martin Sanders, on his thoughts ahead of tonight's fixture. I think it'd be tight. I think it'd be edgy. I think you'll have some tired bodies after the weekend's heroics against uh, Watford. Um, I think he'd need to make it make changes to, to get the result he requires. And I think Joe Rebo looked tired Saturday. I think Stuart Armstrong comes back in for him. Ryan Manning's been out of the question the last couple of weeks. He'll come back in at left back, I think. Um, for James Bree, Carl Walker Peters be fine at right back. I think he has a selection headache at the back with Jack Stevens or Jan Bednarek. The rest of the team probably speaks for itself. And if he can put the right side out and not too many changes, I fancy a Saints win tonight. Shane Adams has scored two in the last two games. He's on form at St Mary's. I fancy him to net one tonight. Adam Armstrong's due another goal as well. Um, I think it'd be 2-1 Saints tonight. That's my, my, um, my score prediction for tonight. Yes, so that is what Martin had to say about tonight's fixture. It goes without saying it is a must win for both sides. Southampton Spirits are in a good sort after a 99th minute winner against Watford from their own Flynn Downs. And Preston, not so much after a 1-0 loss to David Wagner's Norris City has all but killed their hopes of a playoff place. When the Lily Whites arrive from Lancashire, the tension will be rising and the atmosphere will be building on the south coast. But for now, we go back to you in the studio. Thank you, Joey. The second legs of the quarterfinals in the Champions League kick off tonight. Richard Dortmund hosts Atletico Madrid with Madrid holding the aggregate advantage. Barcelona hosts Paris Saint-Germain with the home side 3-2 up on aggregate. FWC Squared have been to the driving range and explored the impact that the Masters has had on local golf clubs in the UK. The Masters won the four major golf championships. Some people dream of teeing off on the greens of Augusta whereas some people dream of covering the prestigious tournament. And I have been at the Masters. I've been here for at least a week now working um, in the press. I was lucky enough to get approved to work here and it has been the best week ever. Either way, Masters inspires a lot of people to pick up a golf club and give it a swing. Big tournaments like the Masters and the Open in the UK as well, they really inspire young people, old people, all generations, all people, just to play the game of golf. And it is amazing. Let's see what you guys are doing back in England. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're at Hedge End Driving Range to find out about local golf in Southampton. We're also going to have a few swings ourselves. Local golf clubs have seen an influx of new beginners teeing off for the first time, wanting to get a taste of the sport, including Hedge End Driving Range in Southampton, who also offer lessons to their customers. One of their PGA coaches looks forward to this time of year. The Masters on the telly and everyone gets a chance to watch it. Um, everyone thinks that, you know, they can have a chance at, at maybe one year going out there to, to play in it. Chances are very slim. But you always get that little boost of, yeah, come on, let's give it a try. So, um, yeah, we will expect uh, the next few weeks, month or so, to be a, a busy little driving range. The Masters not only attracts new customers to golf clubs, but it also inspires the staff members who work there. I love the idea of watching Masters and the players and all that sort of, any sort of golfing event and so on, I do try and watch. Uh, sadly, with work and commitments like that, yeah. it's not always plausible. Um, but, yeah, no, luckily, yeah, so if it's on, then it's something I do try and watch. The Masters... It's quite a good chance, especially if you're somebody who takes golf a bit more seriously and you want to look, look at how somebody else swings, somebody else hits the ball. 
it's quite good to be able to look at that and take improving points from there and then try and focus that on your own game. Not only has the Masters inspired many people this time round to pick up a club, but it will for many years to come. Gemma Mill recently competed at the Commonwealth Judo Championships in Malta, earning herself a silver medal. Sports Hub have spoke with Mill following her success. Gemma Mill has won silver at the Commonwealth Judo Championships over the last weekend. The Solent University scholar beat multiple fighters in her under 78kg weight category she competes in. Gemma spoke to Sports Hub about the championships and some of the challenges that she's faced upon competing whilst maintaining her studies. Gemma is one of 20 Solent students who is a part of the Solent Scholar Scheme, supporting athletes in their studies and sporting activity. It's always nice to go there and win the top, you know, be at the top. And obviously, you know, it's uh, for me personally, it's a great achievement. So to win sort of a silver medal after sort of two years of doing judo is, you know, is, is a big achievement for me. And it's something I'm, I'm very proud of. It's already a very difficult um, career to, time, to kind of balance both. I'm here as the support officer to kind of help them make that as easy as possible. That was Kelly Sim, two times Commonwealth gold medalist, who now works at Solent University in the sports department, supporting athletes whilst they compete and study. I mean, especially in the run-up to a competition, it's hard because I'm training six, you know, five, six days a week. Well, it's a big competition, you know, training's really important. I need to... If I don't train, I won't perform as well as I can do. So, um, sort of my studies sort of took a little bit of a, a back step. Um, and there are, yeah, the different um, practitioners and the, a little bit of finance to kind of help them. It, it's, it's not huge and there's so much they've got to do and it's just a little bit of help and encouragement along their way. Uh, they've been really good, actually. Uh, really good, obviously. Being part of the scholarship scheme has given me extra support and extra... Um, attention I suppose. It's helped them organising their timetables or kind of having someone to talk to or being a bit of a signpost really to get them to where they need to be. It's a great thing to be a part of um, the university, hopefully really value it and it hopefully gives them a bit of publicity and it shows the rest of the university what they're doing. Compete for Great Britain, um, go internationally, you know, go around to lots of different countries and sort of do this on a semi-regular basis I guess. Gemma is now focusing on upcoming fights that she has for the remainder of this year, whilst also spending time on her master's degree in cyber security engineering at Solent University. Varsity is coming up for Solent University, with the indoor sports competing on the 24th of April and the outdoor sports competing on the 1st of May. Sports Fusion spoke to a few players and a coach about this year's Varsity's event. Launched in 2016, Varsity is an annual sporting event between Sonic University and Bournemouth University. The event consists of various sporting matches played across two days, with indoor sports being played in Solent Sports Complex and outdoor sports taking place at Chapel Gate in Bournemouth. Friendly rivalries, we still see each other, especially for the Ravens when we go to cheer comps. Uh, they do really well at our competition, so it's fun to see them at comp and then get to see them one-on-one. -on -one. For us as cheer and dance, we've got a busy two weeks ahead, back from Easter, lots of training schedules. Communication is massive, especially for uh, us throwing girls around in the air. Um, you've got to have that trust, and communication is how we roll. Uh, a sporting event like this brings a large amount of attention to those involved, which creates nerves. I've been a dancer my whole life, so I'm kind of used to it. But it's more just having fun. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. I think if you let it, the nerves kind of get the best of you, it's not you're not going to do as well as you want. The socials have been a massive thing that have brought everyone together. And obviously we have like big group chats and we're all, you know, when it's game day and everyone watches the stream and they message in how well we did, like there's a lot of team morale from mm -hmm. being on different teams and collaborating with different people. I feel like Varsity is going to be the best version of what we've had throughout this year. A record-breaking 36 fixtures have that will take place on Wednesday the 1st of May. With the sports societies who are competing having their respective seasons drawn to a close, they will be turning their preparation to varsity. Well the team has been like training a lot with uh, the adult team, selling freshers, uh, also alongside uh, gym work and just expert training mm -hmm. uh, to make sure we can beat Bournemouth in the, the upcoming match. Yeah, so a lot of uh, plyometrics like explosive, um, let's build speeds, um, in training, just going through plays, going through what they would run compared to how we run. I enjoy the nurse. Um, I was never shy of taking a challenge on, especially against a good team like Bournemouth. 
So basically throughout the year we've definitely become more of a team, come more together. We'll definitely try and take on the challenge and do our best and have fun. And finally, reporter Perrin Phillips has taken on the VO2 max test. The VO2 max test determines someone's maximal oxygen consumption during exercise. It's considered one of the hardest tests in sport. And today, we're at the Solent Sports Complex to find out how much oxygen I consume during exercise on a bike. The first job was to sign consent forms and health screening test. Then to measure my resting blood pressure and heart rate. Once we measured my height and my weight and got the mass fitted, it was time for Scott Burnett, the sports scientist, to explain the VO2 max test to me. We're just doing VO2 today. Um, we'll do like um, what we call like a ramp-based test, okay? Where there'll be very subtle increments every single minute um, and getting to the point where you eventually fatigue. So the test began with minimal resistance when pedaling. Throughout the test, that resistance got stronger and stronger and stronger until you can't cycle any longer. At about 18 minutes into the test, I had reached my VO2 max. Heart rate, carbohydrate, and fat usage, oxygen consumption, and carbon dioxide outage was measured throughout the test. Expect so we've got like basically a, a measure of what we call VO2 peak, the highest point that your VO2 really yeah. gets to. So um, yeah, I know it was um, it was a good effort, and so certainly you've gone to max at least anyway. So pushed me to the max. It, Real tested me. It was got harder and harder as we went on, and suddenly dropped off a cliff. Had nothing more to give, and the computer said no, so I couldn't carry on anymore. That's all for today. For more news, check out our website, solarsportsnews.com.